In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eleazar? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, so shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord who credited it to him as, as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah as he had said he would, he did for her as, she, as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the, set, at the set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to this son of his whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory in his holy name, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength, constantly seek his face. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile, for he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. 
and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed." There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Israel. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the life of the American activist and author Helen Keller, who lived in the 1800s and 1900s, we see someone who triumphed over the double learning disability of both blindness and deafness. She loses her ability to see and to hear very early in life. And what is troubling then is that for Helen Keller, there is no way to have language. She has never read or been spoken to, and she is in the dark in terms of her eyes and on mute in terms of sound. You can't flip a switch to turn on a screen or the sound for her. But as you may know, Helen Keller does learn to communicate, even to converse. You and I take words for granted. We text, we delete texts, we send them. For us, we might say talk is cheap and even unlimited on T-Mobile or Verizon. But this is not true for Helen, who as a young person and student learns to treasure and to value every word in the famous play The Miracle Worker, a new teacher comes on the scene whose name is Annie Sullivan, and Helen Keller learns from this teacher, and in the famous scene, the teacher takes her to the water pump and lets the clear, clean H2O flow over her hands and simultaneously writes the letters into the palm of her hand for W-A-T-E-R, water. It is a great moment of revelation that Helen now has a structure and an intellect to store her experiences. Or as one person wrote, for Helen Keller, one word is worth a thousand pictures. We say it the other way, the typical way, and it applies to the way we use Instagram and YouTube and our phones, that photos and images say a lot. And the old saying is, A picture is worth a thousand words, but for Helen, the opposite is true. One word is worth a thousand pictures. We read in the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. 
Jesus is the Word made flesh, the incarnation of God's Word. What does it mean to give our Word, to give someone our Word? It means, for example, that you are entrusting yourself to someone or someone is entrusting himself or herself to you. One day I read a text from a friend we were going to meet in a little while, and this friend sent me a text saying, I will be there in 19 minutes. I was impressed by the precision of this message. We laughed about it later because my friend meant to write, I'll be there in 10 minutes, but accidentally wrote 19 instead of 10. The precision impressed me. The word impressed me, and it revealed something about me, about my own desire for precision and exactness. One word is worth a thousand pictures of me. There is a big word in the gospel today, an important word, the word contradiction. That's a big grown-up word, and it's being applied to the small infant child Jesus. We read that he is a contradiction to those around him. He's a sign of contradiction. The biblical scholar Dr. Kenneth Bailey wrote that this gospel, as a reminder, is really a prediction. This Christmas gospel is a prediction of Good Friday and Easter. Simeon predicts that a a sword will pierce the heart of Mary and that many hearts will be revealed. And on Good Friday, everything is in distress, everything is in disarray. Pontius Pilate, who believes Jesus is innocent, condemns him to die. Peter, who affirms Jesus as the Messiah and is his friend, denies him three times. The high priests, the priests and Pharisees, who were impressed with his miracles, bolster these charges against him. The life and ministry of Jesus exposes contradictions. It is our call to believe It is consoling and it is our call to believe, but it is not a simple thing to believe. This is true in human relationships as well, in the promises we make. On the day of baptism, for example, the parents and godparents, and on the day of the birth of a child, parents make a promise to raise their child well. That's a word. That word is worth a thousand pictures and decisions and actions to come. At the altar of marriage, spouses promise I do to each other. That's a word that is worth a thousand pictures and actions to come. As Catholics and as Christians, we also believe in the beauty of the family, not only in the commitments of family, but even in the contradictions that are present in family life. Of course, friendships are important in life, but on this Sunday we celebrate holy family and family life, a reminder that family is deeper than our friendships. There's something more significant in it, and it's a reminder to us that we did not create ourselves. We often think of choosing our friends or being chosen by our friends, but we didn't choose our family. Our family was a gift to us. It's a reminder to us that we are created in a family, or to use a popular term of today, The family is our pre-existing condition. It was given to us, and we treasure it. And in the bonds and connection and beauty of family life, we we discover something that we didn't create. For example, we can apologize to each other, we can even patch things up with each other, forgive each other, but we ultimately rely on God for forgiveness, for the recreation and redemption of forgiveness. We need the gift of Jesus loving us to the end at every stage of life, reminding us that we matter. Life is full of contradictions, and one word is worth a thousand pictures in him. The Nicene Creed, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ is the joy to all who look for his presence, that we may be awake to the Lord's coming and his arrival, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the actions of many in our Catholic parish may assist the needy and marginalized, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, including Timoteo Pimentel, Timoteo Pimentel, Giovanni Savoia, Jeff Torres, Peter Zanin, Genevieve Beninati, Dolores De Lucia, Deacon Ernest Abad, Monsignor Joseph Petrillo, Sister John Margaret Harrington, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those we keep in our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, who may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Lourdes, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. 
on behalf of all the priests who serve here at Our Lady of Lourdes, our regular um, weekend assistants and weekday assistants, Monsignor Robert Coleman, Father Robert Susco, Father Jim Churn, and myself, Father Jim Ferry, a blessed and holy Christmas and blessed new year to all of you. And from our parish staff as well, a blessed and holy Christmas and new year to you as well. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended.